Hey everyone, Nick Marzinski here at TrappingLight.com. In my previous tutorial, I introduced the concept of layers within Photoshop and showed how just a few adjustment layers can make some rather significant changes to an image. And that's basically where I left it. Today, I want to take it a step further. See, the problem with the layers examples that I gave last week was that when I applied l adjustment layers to my image, those adjustment layers were applied to the entire image. In the case of this image, which is the one I was working at, this is what it looked like before and this is what it looked like after with the inclusion of a levels adjustment layer. And this levels adjustment layer brightened the highlights rather significantly and darkened the shadows just a little bit. But it did it to the entire image. All of the highlights in this image were brightened. All of the shadows were darkened. And in this image, this sort of adjustment layer works well. But what about this image here? In this image, we've got two very different areas of the image. We've got sky up on the top, and then we've got this darker uh, ground that's, that's, that's on the bottom of the image, okay? And in this case, let's say that I want to darken the sky down a little bit. When I took this picture, the sky was rather dark and kind of ominous, except for this area here where the sun was poking through. So I want to darken the sky down to make it really give it that ominous feel. Well, in order to do that, I could go down here to my levels adjustment uh, layer and add a levels and let's darken up the sky I'm going to take my midpoint slider and move it over there and maybe move my black point slider just to really kind of introduce a little bit of darkness to it and the sky looks pretty good but the problem is that now the ground is too dark so this isn't working I fixed one problem but I've introduced another now, if you're familiar with a program called Adobe Lightroom, there's a tool in that program called an adjustment brush that allows you to selectively brush on adjustments. So what I could do in Lightroom is I could, say, make things a little bit darker and then brush that dark onto the sky and then it wouldn't affect the ground at all. But this is Photoshop. And Photoshop is used for more than just photographs. See, Lightroom's basically a raw editing tool that's designed only for photographs. But Photoshop, although it can be used for photographs, is also used for with you know designing things like websites and that sort of stuff. So there's really nothing like an adjustment brush in Photoshop, at least not that we can use. What Photoshop provides instead are these tools called layer masks. And it turns out that layer masks are much more flexible than anything an adjustment brush can do. And I'm going to spend the rest of the tutorial talking about them. Now, when people are new to Photoshop and new to layer masks, this is a concept that's very, very dif difficult to grasp. And so I'm going to start off with an example that hopefully will make it a little bit easier to understand. What I've got in this file is I've got two layers. I've got a green layer on the bottom and a red layer on top. If I disable the red layer, you can see the green layer below it. Okay. Now, in my last tutorial about layers, I talked about layers as sheets that are stacked on top of one another. So in this case, it's, it's kind of like a sheet of red construction paper on top of a sheet of green construction paper. And let's say that I want to hide just a part of the red layer to reveal the green layer below it. Okay, And the easiest way to do that is to select my red layer and then grab my eraser tool over here on the toolbar and then start painting. And just like that, I'm getting rid of the red layer and you can see the green layer below it. The problem with doing things that way is, is that if you look here in my layers palette, what I've actually done is I've actually erased those red pixels. If I disable the green layer, it makes it even clearer. This checkerboard pattern in Photoshop shows an area where there's no image data at all. So though that area that I've erased is without image data, I've completely obliterated those pixels. And this is a destructive edit. If I come back, to, if I save it and come back to it, those pixels are going to be gone forever. I'm never going to be able to get them back. Using the example of construction paper that I talked about before with a red sheet on top of a green sheet, this is the equivalent of tearing holes in my construction paper. So this is, this is bad if you can get away with making a change without having to do this, without having to destroy image pixels, you're much better off down the road. Instead of doing it this way, I'm going to actually undo it by pressing Control Z. Instead of doing it this way, what I want to do is I want to come up with a way to actually keep those red pixels. I just simply want to hide them so if I ever need them again, I can get them back. And that's how layer masks work. 
What layer masks allow you to do is selectively make parts of your layer more or less transparent. So here's how to do it. With my red layer selected in my layers palette, I'm going to click on this icon on the bottom that looks like a circle inside of a rectangle. That's an add layer mask icon. If I click on it, nothing happens to the image, but if you look here in the layers palette, there's a white rectangle that appears next to my image. The first thing to understand about layer masks, which is what this white rectangle is, is that layer masks are monochromatic. They can only exist in three possible colors. They can be white, they can be black, or they can be gray or any combination of those three. If a layer mask is white, or if all of a layer mask is white, then the layer that it's linked to, in this case the red layer, is completely visible. It's all you see. If it's black, then the layer that it's linked to is completely hidden. If it's gray, the layer that it's linked to is partially visible. So in order to change the color of the layer mask, all I have simply have to do is to paint on it, really. So I'm going to grab my brush tool here. And now, because, like I said, it's monochromatic, I want to make sure that I'm only painting in white, black, or gray. The colors that control what I'm painting with are right down here in the toolbar. And you can see that there's these two boxes. The first one is my foreground color. The second is my background color. The foreground color is what I'm painting with, but I can also switch to the background color by pressing X on my keyboard, which toggles between the two like that. In addition, the other shortcut that's important to know is the, uh, pressing the D button will make it so that your colors will go back to the default of white and black. So if, for example, I have my foreground color set to some version of red and my background color set to some version of blue, and I want to paint on my layer mask, I can't paint with red and blue because layer masks can only be painted on with black and white. In order to switch back to black and white, I just press the D key, there I go, and then I can toggle between the two. Aside from that, the other thing that's important to know is that when you're painting on a layer mask, you, want to, you need to make sure that that layer mask is selected. In this case, I've got the red layer selected, but the boundaries are around the actual red layer themselves. If I start painting on the red layer like this, what I'm actually doing is I'm painting white on my red layer. You can see that right there in the layers palette, so I'm going to undo that. I'm going to select my layer mask by clicking on it. Now I've got those um, boundaries right around the layer mask. And make sure that my foreground color is set to black, so I'll toggle over to the black. And then, with it selected, my brush tool selected, painting on the layer mask, keeps the red pixels as you can see here but hides those red pixels and so you can see the green that's beneath it. If I turn around and paint with white on this layer mask then what I'm doing is I'm actually bringing those red pixels back. So the red pixels are always there the layer mask is simply hiding them and that's the key. I can always get them back even if I save the image and come back to it later but they're hidden and so the layer that I, the, the the layer underneath is what gets revealed. Let's jump back to that image that I had before. Here I've got a levels adjustment layer which is fine on the sky but doesn't work on the ground. Now one of the great things about adjustment layers is that they come preloaded with a layer mask. When I f when I brought up the levels adjustment layer, it already had this white box here which is my layer mask. It's white white reveals, black conceals, and so I can see the levels adjustment that's made to the entire image. If I want it just made to the sky, all I have to do is simply paint out the ground on the layer mask. So I click the layer mask, make sure it's selected, grab my brush, make sure my foreground color is set to black by pressing D. Now, when you're painting on layer masks, particularly images like this, the thing that's important to do, one thing that I, that I didn't talk about before, but it's very important to know, is, is that your brush hardness should be set to zero. And the reason why is, is if you have a hardness set to 100, and you start painting on a layer mask, it's very clear that that layer mask is getting painted on, because you've got these very, very hard, obvious edges. And you want to avoid that as much as you can when you're doing it. It's very it makes it very obvious that there were Photoshop edits made to an image and you want your edits to be more subtle. By changing the hardness to zero, when I paint on the image and I paint on the layer mask, 
my changes are much more gradual and much more feathered in. So it makes it a much more natural change. And by painting in black on the bottom on the layer mask here, I've now hidden that levels adjustment layer from this lower part of the image where I didn't want it applied. However, I've kept it up on the top. So if I enable and disable it, you can see that the bottom of the image doesn't change at all because that levels adjustment is masked out. But the top of the image changes rather significantly. Let's add another uh, adjustment layer to, uh, to the image. In this case, what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of color to the leaves here. It was just beginning of fall. They were just starting to turn. So I'm going to add a hue saturation layer. I'm going to boost my saturation just a bit. And we'll boost it to there. Now, in this case, it's, it's giving this kind of weird, unnatural greens and blues in the sky, which I really don't care that much for. I'd prefer that it'd be kind of this darker, steely gray instead. But I kind of like what it's doing to the ground. Maybe we'll just drop the saturation just a little bit. In this case, I also, by the way, in addition to liking what it's doing on the ground, I kind of like this yellow that, that I'm getting up here. Okay? Well, but I want to get rid of that adjustment right around here where it's just introducing this brown and a little bit of green up here that I really don't like. Well, that's pretty simple using a layer mask. I select the layer mask here, make sure my foreground color is set to black, and then just simply paint out that saturation adjustment up here in the sky where I don't want it to be. And again, the saturation adjustment is retained on the ground where I want it. And also this yellow here is also still getting a bit of a boost to saturation. There's one final thing that I want to go over with layer masks um, that's a really useful tool, and that's adding vignettes. See, within uh, other programs like Lightroom, for example, you can add vignettes very easily, but you can't really do a whole lot of customization. You basically can either add a vignette just to the center of the image or in Lightroom 5 now you can use the radio filter to add selective vignettes in areas that you want them. But in Photoshop using layer masks you can be very very um, specific with your vignettes and you really have a lot of control how they, on, on how they appear. So in this case I'm going to simply grab a levels adjustment layer. I'm going to boost my blacks to darken things up. Now again it's boosting the blacks everywhere and this looks horrible but it, because I'm using a layer mask, I can simply choose where I want that darkness to appear and how much I want it to appear. So right now it's appearing everywhere. I don't want that at all. My layer mask is white. I'm going to invert it by pressing Control and I, or Command I. That turns the layer mask black. This adjustment is still here. It's just completely hidden. Now I'm going to grab my brush and I want to reveal it so I'm going to be painting with white. Now if I just paint with white like this, it's going to reveal it and it's just going to look horrible. Okay, And that's not what I want because right here you can just see it looks like it's all burned on and, and, and very, very um, distracting. What I want to do instead is I want to just simply partially reveal it, reveal it just a little bit. In order to do that, with my brush selected, and my foreground color set to white, I'm going to take my opacity and I'm going to set it down to somewhere right around 10 or 15%. With my opacity set low on my brush, every single time I stroke on the layer mask, I put a stroke on the layer mask, it's going to add just a little bit of white. So you can see that it's adding just a little bit. And by doing it this way, what I can do is I can build up the vignette the way that I want it to. So I don't have to immediately uh, put a really, really harsh edge on. And if you look at the layer mask here, you can see what I'm doing. And I'll actually show you by just, oh, there we go. That's what it actually looks like. And how I did that is I held down the Alt key and clicked on the layer mask. But I can paint directly on the layer mask with the low opacity brush. And that provides a rather um, much more controlled way to apply a change. 
If I don't like it, I can just come back and add a little bit of black to my layer mask to brush the effect out. So that's a really easy way to add just a little bit of vignetting, just to kind of darken the edges of the image down a bit to lead the viewer into the image. And that's another way that layer masks can be used to apply very selective edits to an image to make very, very targeted changes. So that's all for now. Next week I'm going to be talking about layer styles, which are yet another set of tools that you can use in Photoshop to alter how a layer interacts with the rest of your image and with the other layers beneath it in the layer stack. In the meantime, if you're not familiar with layer masks, Start using them when you're making edits to your, to your image. Apply an adjustment layer and then start brushing that layer on or off using layer masks. Play around with brushes. Play around with the hardness setting on a brush. Play around with the opacity on a brush. If you're using Photoshop, full Photoshop, and you've got this flow control, play around with using a low flow brush, which will allow you even more control in how much white or black gets added to your layer mask. That's it for, for now. If you have any questions about layer masks, I realize that it's a very confusing topic. If you have questions, either leave them in the comment section on the YouTube channel or over at my blog on trappinglight.com. Again, my name is Nick Marzinski. Thanks for watching.